ladies and gentlemen, so good to have you with us. We thank God for you. Amy Carmichael said, those who think too much of themselves don't think and she is right. Beloved, in this chapter, Hannah, the mother of the prophet Samuel, offers a of praise up to God. It was the desire of a child. One of the things that she uh, is a condemnation of those who speak proudly against God and against others. And there are many like that in the world. Hannah, it is believed, was thinking of Penina, her adversary, who was Elkanah's other wife, her rival, and had several children with Hannah, a wild Hannah, rather, was barren, and still praying for a child. And the reason that Hannah gives for us the truth for us to remain humble and reject pride and arrogancy is the judge of our actions because God is the judge of our actions. Allow me to, to repeat that in your hearing. The reason that Hannah gives for us to remain humble and reject pride and arrogancy is because God is the judge of our actions. And God is the one who has the power to change a situation that would slap your pride and as in this case, now God has answered Hannah's prayers. And not only that, gave her a son who would become one of the great uh, servants. By humans, they may think that we have something to be proud of. Oftentimes, people who are doing the judging are proud and arrogant. And God will humble ourselves. This is uh, in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. In fact, we do quite often, often about here is... We ourselves pray, seek God's face, turn from our wicked ways. That's the first thing that God wants us to do. The first thing that God hates is pride and even a proud, arrogant look. Have you ever a proud look? because you had a proud heart. You thought you were more beautiful than another woman and you had a proud look because you had a proud heart. Or you were driving a better car than one man and you picked him or you stopped at the light and you looked at his car and you had a proud look knowing that thinking that your car was better. 
because you had a proud heart. God hates pride and arrogance. One of the reasons why God hates pride and arrogancy is because he can't help you, and the people he sends to you to try to help you, they can't help you. You cannot help a proud and arrogant person. And so God arranges things so that uh, in such a way to humble people like that down. But there are, are some people who have what I call pharaohistic pride, which is a very, very dangerous kind of pride to have. It comes from favor that caused him to be drowned into the sea and possibly uh, to hell. They're so proud they won't bow the knee. Um, protesters last week were trying to get him to bow, to, to kneel. And he humbly said, I only kneel to God. I don't kneel to anybody else. I like that. But when being judged by God, we have nothing. We have nothing, and we are nothing. And nobody knows that better than God. We are nothing without God. We have nothing without God. The Bible says even our best deeds, when we are in our best state, like fish in the whole of God. Hannah emphasizes the power of God as she describes his ability to break the strong and lift up the weak. And God is in that business of humbling people down and lifting the humble up. He does it all the time, and you have no control over it. There are people right now in the world who are baffled at how did he get up there? Who is he? How did he? Why does he have so much power, so much influence? Why? Why? How does she get up there? She doesn't even have a degree like I do. She's not as pretty like I do. I think there's a song out there that talks about pride in this way. Title, I believe, Don't You Wish You Were Hot Like Me. Very popular song among the young people and some old people, sad to say, Don't You Wish You Were Hot Like Me. This song is pride. Arrogancy. The power of God is another reason for us to be humble. When we see his might, we should realize that we are not so important. Isn't that right? We have no might compared to what God has. We think we do. We think we're somebody, little puny men, and women, we think we're all that in a bag of chips and a Coke. And we're nothing compared to God. Dr. David Guzik said, Hannah wisely told the proud to talk no more and to let no arrogance come from their mouth, to be quiet. Pride can be expressed in many ways. One of the ways is attitude. There are many people who have attitude of, you can't tell me anything. I know more than you. I'm smarter than you. I'm prettier than you. I got more than you. I have more education uh, than you do. And that's what's, that's what's behind. You know what's behind the racism in America? Pride. Arrogancy. 
black folks thinking they're better than whites, white folks thinking they're better than blacks. They've heard lies, they've felt lies, and they have believed lies. And that's why we have the racial warfare going on. And it's not going to go anywhere until, as my lieutenant governor said, until Jesus comes into the heart. Because Jesus has a way of taking away that pride, that arrogance, breaking you and you and molding you to be a humble servant of the Lord. It is usually expressed by our words, our arrogant words that come from our arrogant and proud hearts and spirits. But it also comes out in our attitude, our stinking, proud, arrogant attitude. We have a proud attitude. Nobody can tell us. Nobody can help us. Frustrated, get mad when somebody tries to point out an in our lives. A stinking pride. Somebody is trying to tell us something, how to do something better, and we react immediately. With pride, and some people have this sin very bad. I mean, you can't tell them anything. If, if you try to tell them that will help, help them, they won't listen. Have you ever been around people like this? It's a demonic spirit. It is a demonic spirit from hell itself. Have you ever been around somebody like that? Even when you you do something nice for them, you do something good for them, they're proud and arrogant about it. Have you ever met somebody who is so proud, they love something, they don't want it, they won't eat it, they won't have it? That's, that's not only demonic, that's dumb. There are some people who uh, are not wise, and then there's some who are not wise or smart. They're proud and they're arrogant. And I want to tell you something, folks. Pride. Dumb. Proud and arrogant makes you look very dumb and uh, very ignorant. You think that in your pride you do all that, but, but you, you look dumb, look ignorant to other people. It's just like uh, people who are racist. The, the people around you, white and black, if you if they know you are a racist and you ask asking people questions about why do you put uh, Black Lives Matter and so forth and so on, they look at you like you, 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 you're dumb, you're stupid, you're ignorant. All people who, all people who are racist and Prejudice. You feel sorry if you have if you are a child of God. You feel sorry for them because they're 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 walking in ignorance and foolishness. How could you be better than me? We we have the same mother and the same father, Adam and Eve. We just have different shades, different colors. That's all. He's a man. Here's another man. Four men, all different colors, different backgrounds. Four women, all different colors, different backgrounds. They're all uh, the same, just different colors, different backgrounds. And yet, the white man is proud because he thinks he's better than the black man. The black man is black and proud because he thinks he's better than the white man. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, there are white supremacists and there are black supremacists as well. Then the China man thinks that he's better than the white, the white man and the black man. And the Indian man thinks that everybody, all, all, everybody, everybody's dumb. And that they're better than everybody. 
And that makes us all look very stupid. Pride makes you look very stupid and very dumb to any smart person. Arrogancy. It would be better if proud people just did not talk so much, knowing that the Lord is the God of knowledge, according to Hannah. Knowing that the Lord is the God of knowledge is the best reason to forsake our pride, our arrogancy. Next to God, we know nothing. He knows us. He knows everything. And by him, actions are weighed. We should be humble before God because he knows how to humble the proud. And if you don't humble yourself, God knows how to humble you. Have you ever been humbled by God before? It's not a fun experience. And some people don't make it out right. And God takes them through the humbling process. In fact, the humbling process can be humiliating. And if you don't humble yourself, if you don't bow the knee to God yourself and humble yourself before him, God will humble you. God can and will strip you of everything you have. Family members, friends, money, house, car, whatever you think you're proud about, he'll take it all and strip you down to nothing because he wants you more than you can imagine. To be his humble child and servant. And he will allow bad things to happen to his children. To break them and to make them and to mold them. That's what's happening right now with this plague upon us. God did not want to do this. But he had to. Why? Because people in the church have become proud and arrogant looking down our nose at other people, all about the money and all about the Benjamins and all about the material things. Uh, most preachers were worse than the rappers in multiple ways, having more bling, as they call it, than the rappers did, committing the same sins that the rappers had to become prophets and started preaching in their rap songs against the preachers. The church has become proud, and so God is stripping the church, shutting down churches, breaking us and making us and molding us to be what he wants us to be. Some will not make it. Some have not made it. But when it's all said and done, if the Lord's going to tarry his coming, uh, I believe that people who are left behind by the grace of God will understand that God is nobody to play with and they'll be more humble. Pastors will be more humble. Church members will be more humble. Because, you see, once we become proud and arrogant, we begin to marginalize God. We begin to push God to the periphery. We begin to knock God off of the throne of our hearts and start thinking foolishly that the blessings we have came through us or to some other, through some other man, and that is not the case. Those who were full are now begging. That's right. That's happening in America right now. People who were full and had a refrigerator full of food and cabinets full of food and Big money coming in every week are now in long lines waiting for a box of food to last them one or two days. 
and she who has many children has become feeble. If we are strong or exalted now, we should keep humble because the Lord can change our place very quickly. Isn't that right? With the quickness, God has put us under a play. Right now, you would like to go to your favorite restaurant and eat lunch, but you really can't because you, you don't want to go through the rigmarole of, of uh, distancing yourself from people and having somebody come out with a mask on and gloves on and they make you put gloves on and a mask on. And it's just ridiculous. If you have a thought right now of going to a, a, your favorite place or going somewhere and you, you dare not do it. Some of you have uh, a desire to go back to the church house, but people are dying at the church house because of this coronavirus plague. You have a notion to go do something or to go help somebody, but you can't. What is God doing? God is humbling us down, breaking us, making us, and molding us. We, we refuse to humble ourselves, and so God is humbling us down right now. We should be humble before God because... He knows how to exalt the weak. If we are weak or in a low state, a low place, now we should wait humbly before our God and let him, let him lift us up. God has the power to humble down the proud and God has the power to Lift up the humble. That's in the Old Testament and in the New Testament. Instead of speaking proud and arrogant words, we should follow the words of Hannah and recognize that we are found unworthy, unworthy in the scales of God, and we should stay humble and faithful and avoid being proud and arrogant. Dear friend, if you struggle with pride, take this passage to heart and take heed to it the next time you face that temptation. Humble yourself down, and God will lift you up. Let's pray. Holy Father God, we praise you and we thank you for this Bible lesson today. Lord, uh, help all of us to humble down before you, to pray, to seek your face, to turn from our wicked ways as your believing people. Grant us your grace and the power of your Holy Spirit to do it. And Lord, we pray that you would save those who are lost and some who are very proud and who don't want to hear it out, hear the gospel, because they think they can work their way to heaven. Lord, help them to be humble today and to realize they must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ who paid their sin debt. Help them to be humble and to believe on Christ and be saved today. In Jesus Christ's name we pray and for sake. Amen. Now, dear friend, if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ has some words for you. He said in John 3.16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, that whosoever shall, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Dear friend, notice the words of Jesus Christ. God so loved the world. God chose to love you and me, even though we are unlovable. Even though we have sinned against God. 
and uh, have been counted as enemies of God. God so loved the world. If you're in this world, dear friend, God loves you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Jesus Christ is speaking of himself. Jesus Christ suffered, bled, and died on the cross for all of our sins. He was buried and rose on the third day. Have you ever met him? Have you ever believed on him? Have you ever trusted him as Savior? Because the rest of the verse says that whosoever believeth in him. Do you remember a time where you believed in him? We're not talking about the day you joined the church. We're not talking about the day you got baptized. Those things are good, but they will not save your soul from hell. You must believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ. It does not matter whether your mother is saved or a Christian. It does not matter whether your father is saved or a Christian. And they're good church-going people. You must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ in your heart for yourself. The word believeth means to trust in, to have faith in, to rely on, to depend upon. You can depend on Jesus. You can rely on him. You can have faith in him. You can trust him. That's all you need to do to be saved according to the words of Jesus. The next phrase is should not perish. If you believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today, you will not perish in that awful place called hell where you will suffer eternal death and torment forever, but have rather everlasting life. If you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ today, you can have everlasting life in heaven. No, you cannot work for it. No, you cannot pay money for it. You don't have enough money. There's not enough money in the world to pay for this salvation. Never has been. No, you cannot serve in the church for it. None of these things can save you. Only belief. Only faith in Jesus Christ. Give him your heart. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today. And pray and ask him to save your soul. Romans 10, 9 and 13 says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart, that God hath raised him from the dead, thou you shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. Saved to what? Saved to heaven to be with God. Dear friend, if you're willing to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, if you're willing to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and pray, call on his name, and ask him to save you. I assure you that he'll save you today. And on the calling part, the prayer part, I'll be glad to lead you in the prayer since you have never done it before. Somebody led me in the prayer, and I've led many others to Christ in prayer. You just make sure you believe in your heart in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for your sins was buried and rose on the third day, early one Sunday morning. Follow me in prayer. This is called the sinner's prayer. Repeat after me phrase by phrase and mean it from your heart. Holy Father God, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I admit that I have sinned against you. I admit that I have brought commandments to name a few, Lord, a holy name in vain. And sadly, Lord, sometimes with cursing. I am sorry. Would you please 
forgive me. Holy Father, dishonored and disobeyed and rebelled against my parents. When you told me not, not to. Holy Father God, I have coveted in my after people and things. I have lusted in my heart after people and Holy Father, God, I died before. And I understand that I deserve to go to hell for my Just like a criminal deserves to go to jail. Holy Father, God, please have mercy and grace upon my soul. As I am now believing in my heart, in your Holy Son, Jesus Christ, who suffered, bled, and died on the cross for my sins, who paid my sin debt, 